theswirlworld.com podcast episode 118. Today's shout out goes to Stepha Lafond of stephalafond.com. Stepha's mission is to empower women to boldly step out into the world and create the life they've always dreamed of. Her programs are focused on helping women reconnect with their desires and igniting their passion, stepping into their power and gaining confidence in themselves and the decisions they make, time management tactics to help them have the balance they crave, identifying the areas they need extra support and who will provide it, implementing self-care routines that leave them feeling rejuvenated and at their best, creating financial freedom, and banishing mommy guilt. If you're sick and tired of the old stories of being overwhelmed and you're ready to commit to creating your best life now, check out Stepha Lafond at stephalafond.com. That's S-T-E-P-H-A-L-A-F-O-N-D.com. And now, on to today's show. Keep listening. Hello, and welcome to the Swirl World Podcast, brought to you by theswirlworld.com, where we celebrate Black women and the diverse men who love us. Our guest today is Mr. Will Dalton, who is an actor and a comedian recently seen in The Lovings portraying Richard Loving's best friend and confidant, Virgil, in a supporting role. And as many of you may know, The Loving has been nominated by the Critics' Choice for four awards. Now, Will has also appeared in many lead roles, of which one was Prince of Hitsville as Marvin Gaye. Not to mention numerous television, radio, voiceovers, and commercials, as well as theater roles. He is also an accomplished actor and director and writer, and from what I understand, quite an athlete. Will and his lovely wife, Candace Sharp Dalton, make their home in North Carolina. Take some time to welcome Will to our podcast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with Will Dalton. Hello, Will Dalton. It's great to have you here on the Swirl World Podcast. Thank you for taking time out to chat with us. Uh, Thank you guys for having me. How are you guys doing? Everybody in the the podcast. Nice to be here. Thank you so much. And one of the things that we want to um, ask you about is how you got into acting. I know that that's a standard question, but we're curious <laughs> about how, what made you decide, because are you not based in North Carolina? Is that correct? You're right. Right. I am a North Carolinian. Okay. So I guess when you think of acting, that's not the state you think of, right? I, I mean, that's fair to say? So, right. It's very fair to say. So give us a little background. How did you start in acting? What made you get the acting bug and things like that? Give us a little background. Uh, okay. Well, let's see um, if I can remember. That. Honestly, it, it started when I was younger. Uh, I didn't know what, what it was. I just knew that uh, I was very quiet a child, very introverted. But when the cameras, you know, you know the big camcorders back in the day that they used to record home videos with. Yep. Mm-hmm. I remember. <laughs> You know, when my father would bring that out, I would, that was my time to, you know, do my stand-up jokes and my, you know, just be what what I am today and, you know, like entertain. I didn't know what it was at the time. And uh, so I kind of suppressed it all through school and, you know, played basketball, sports. But when I got to college, I took a filler class and it was theater arts. And it, it was just so much fun to get on stage and just, entertain and, you know, do monologues and just pretend and, you know, kind of just not be myself for a while. And, it, and that was fun. And it, it was something that it was, it just came, you know, a little easy to me. And the, uh, my, my, uh, professor asked me to switch my major at the time to theater arts. And I always have to apologize to him 
because at that time I'm young and I said, well, you know, I, I don't think I'll do that. I just I didn't want to be, you know, an out of you know what they what they say an out of work actor because at the time people kind of frowned on it and and I was like, you know, I don't know, you know, my parents want me to go to college and get a degree in marketing or something so I can get a, a desk job and uh, yeah, but but I, you can't escape what what's for you. You know what I mean? So I agree. it uh, it it brought. It, it, it kind of came full circle, like uh, the universe said, no, this is what you're meant to do, and you'll find each other again, and, and, and I did. <laughs> and, <that's, laughs> and I did. And, and that's great. And one of the things we like to encourage our audience <clears throat> is you don't have to limit yourself to where you are or uh, your particular uh, degree or something. If you have a passion for something, right. you're good at something, you're not limited by where you are. You know, you can do it so wherever true. you are, and you're proving that you by can. still making your home base North Carolina and going international, which is my next question is, you got to tell us what what made you decide or what drove you to say, look, I think I'm going to audition for a part in The Loving. You know what's funny, I, and I'm glad you asked that question. It's a great segue, too, because what you just said, about making North Carolina your home base. At the time, I was kind of when you you're kind of burnt out of things that you know you you wish things would happen a little faster. And you know mm -hmm. I'm using that excuse, man. I'm in North Carolina. If I could just get to you know Los Angeles, if I could just get to that you know that place. Because I, I'll go back and forth. But you know, I told my wife, I said we got to move there. You got to be in in the middle of everything. And we had saved up money. We were ready to go. And, and for some reason. Nothing would ever fall on the same page. It was like, you know, oh, we're ready to go, but then something would happen. Oh, we can't go yet. Or, you know, it, it just didn't happen like I had planned it. And the thing that happened after that, I I got a couple of auditions and um, kind of burnt me out. I was I was a little tired, and I told my wife, I said, you know, I think I'm done. R literally, it's the first time I've ever uttered those words and, like, really meant them. I was like, you know, I don't know. I just think I'm done. And she said, you know, are you sure about that? Just give it a little time and see how you feel. But she understood. So, make a long story long. <laughs> the, uh, uh, I ended up getting a call from a casting director named Erica Arval, right? And uh, she she brought me to the director, and I worked, she had cast me on a TV show for AMC called Turn. Yes, and um, yes. so you, you mm -hmm. Turn, watching the spies. I, I worked on there on the first season. And, you know, she was always nice to me, and uh, she had, she, somebody called me from a Virginia number. I didn't know who it was, and my agent at the time, she texted me and said, Erica's trying to contact you. And I was like, Erica who? And she said, Erica, I'll call her. And I said, oh, okay. So I called the number back, talked to her, and it was for something else at that time, and I didn't have the availability to do it. And she said, that's okay. I have something coming up. And you hear that a lot in the industry, and you don't want to kind of bank on it because you don't want to be disappointed. Right, right, and right. Me, me, me being me, you know, kind of skeptical again. I'm like, man, you know, I hear you, and that's cool, but hopefully, you know, everything pans out. But I'll just play it by ear. So, and not even a couple of weeks later, she had contacted my agent. My agent said there's an independent movie they're shooting, and you know, Eric wants you to put yourself on tape for it. And and the first thing I thought, to be honest with, you, and I'm going to be very candid, I was like independent movie because I'm so used to doing things in North Carolina. Not, you know, dismissing any of the people here, but, you know, when you use that word independent and, you know, that I, type I of hear I hear, you know, like umbrella. Right. You know, yeah, independent, you don't know. Right. Independent record label. I get you. I right. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's like, I, you know, I've, I've, I rode that horse before. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to get back on that horse. Right. And, um, so, so she said, no, just listen. She said, listen to me. Take a look at it. I know you're frustrated, but I think you'll you'll like this one. She said, take a look at the breakdown. So I opened my email, and, the, and one of the first people I saw on the um, on the email was Colin Firth. He oh. was executive producer, right? Wow, and that then, made you feel a lot right. better, didn't it? Okay. Ma ma yeah, it made me feel a lot better. I said, okay, wait a minute. Co Colin, be Colin Firth. <laughs> and then I go, you know, I, I see Sarah Green, and I went, okay, Juno, and, and, and you know, all of these right. things. and. And then there were so many people, Peter Sarraf, and, and then I directed and written by Jeff Nichols. And I was like, wait a minute, like, that's the same Jeff Nichols that did Mud. 
Like I'm a fan of that movie. Mm-hmm. And so I was I was gung ho. I immediately called my acting coach. Let's put it on tape. Put it on tape. Sent it off. Didn't hear anything back. We heard something back a couple weeks later, and they said, "Hey, we want you to audition for this other role." And I said, "Okay, let's do it." And I sent it right in. It, it, immediately when I got it, and a couple of days later, I was in Virginia meeting with Jeff and the uh, and some of the producers there, which I thought was a callback. But I learned later that they just wanted to meet me in person. Wow! And, uh, How awesome! So I, right? Yeah, it, it was. It's it's a very surreal thing. The the way that it happened. And the way that it's continuing to happen. And I say all of that about North, you know, when you said North Carolina, making it happen. Right. Where you are. Right. I was so gung-ho about leaving that if I had left, I, I wouldn't have been close, you know, to, for Erica to call me in and say, hey, can you do these things? Absolutely. And you see, that in turn, me not going actually put me in that limelight to where now I can, you know, when I do go with some business, and meetings and things of that nature. I actually signed, um, you know, to one of the biggest agencies there uh, from the movie. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I, you know, I, 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 yeah, it's it's been pretty awesome. Oh, it absolutely has. Now, your role, in, and now correct me if I'm wrong, because sometimes I know the roles, but sometimes I get the name mixed up. But are are you not, uh-huh. you're, you're Virgil in the movie, correct? Virgil. Right. Yes, I'm, I play Virgil. And you are Richard's friend, right? Your mechanic friend yes. and coffee don, and you know you go back and forth with him about some of the decisions that he's making, and, and give him, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is excellent. That's an excellent role. That's excellent. How does, I have to ask you a vanity question. How does it feel when you see the credits rolling and you see your name up there? <laughs> it, it feels really, really, really good. It, it <laughs> I won't lie. It, it feels like you know all the years that you put into it and, you know, you think back. It, it's funny because it's it's not even like a vanity thing that says, ah, oh, there I am. It's really kind of like a a relief that goes, okay. wow, I actually, I actually made it to where I set out to make it. That's I've done so much, you know, you've done so much and given so much of yourself and your time and sacrificing and not being there, you know, uh, my wife can attest to this. Sometimes I'd be on the road doing jobs that were, work, you know, I don't want to put any job down, but there were things that weren't beneficial, you I know, and and then it all comes to a head, and then it goes, you know what? It was all for a moment like this. Yes, absolutely. And you know, as we segue into another question, because you, this is going to be so interesting to our audience, and I do want to step back for just a minute, saying, audience, did you hear what Will said? It took time, patience. Effort, yes, he had some down days and stuff, but you notice he never quit, ever. And this is where he is now. You know, and the other thing I wanted to ask you in regards to that, now that you are in a a production that is being named for awards, Critics' Choice, it is Oscar buzz is all over the news, entertainment news about this movie. And you said now you've recently signed to a, uh, a larger company, what other and I don't and I know actors kind of don't like to jinx things, so I'm, I don't want you to jinx anything. But can you give us some insight on some of the other things that you are doing, or maybe doing, or or anything like that you would like to tell our audience? Yeah, well, right now I'm I'm just me and my agent uh, there. We're we're really um, you know riding the wave of the movie, getting my name out and. Um, like literally, uh, right before uh, we got on the phone, I was uh, I was auditioning for a film that features Chua Tell Um So um, yeah, <laughs> so, fingers Are crossed. You yeah, really? yeah, so serious. I, I was uh, I was going to audition for that movie. Hopefully, you know, mm-hmm. it's 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 pilot season, it's award season, so all the auditions are amping up. So right now, we're just like you know, fielding offers and and seeing what's going on. Where uh, you know, putting our best foot forward and just see what comes next, right? We're not forcing anything, so. Yeah, um, but, I, but I like what you said. You're saying that you're auditioning for everything that comes your way. That's a smart thing to do. Right. You have to. You have to. Cause the more you audition, the better you get at it. You know, but my acting coach always says, you know, a lot of people know how to act, but a lot of people don't know how to audition and get a job. Now, that's it's a good two thing. different things. That's, you know, that's two different good. things. 
boy, you're giving out a lot of excellent advice to our would-be artists out here that want to act or even do voiceovers or do anything in the entertainment field. That's, you've given out a ton of excellent advice just in this interview. Yeah, you, you must. I mean, you just, you, you have to be diligent. You have to, you have to kind of, and you'll never perfect what it is that you're doing. You'll never perfect it. But as long as you keep perfection in sight and maybe you keep it 20 steps ahead of you, and you keep chasing it, then you you know you'll always be better than you were the day before. So you you always want to say you know I want to be better than what I was, and not anybody else, just what I was. So if I can be better than I was yesterday, then I'm I'm I got traction and I'm going forward. You know. All right. And uh, I, I want to ask you because you are in North Carolina, so this this they know who you are. I mean, when you go. And they watch the movie, and and people. Wait a minute! Didn't I see this guy walking down the street? What what is that like, especially <laughs> in North Carolina where you are? What is that like when people recognize you from the movie? You know what's funny? It's actually the opposite here. They they don't unless oh. they know me. Oh, you okay. you, you see what I'm saying? Even yeah. nobody. I mean, some people might look a little bit, but I mean, I get mistaken for so many people. Uh, not even famous people, just people around the way, like, you know, and, and that's cool. But when I was younger, that would have been something I would have been yearning for, you know, mm-hmm. for people to clamor over and say, hey, it's Will, you know, but now it's kind of like, you know, I'm married, I got two kids, and I I, I literally just want to be a working actor. If I get recognized, that's great. If I don't, that's great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's a great Let, let me do the work. Yes. Yeah, yeah I just want to do the work. That's fantastic, Will, because that, that shows that your heart is in just doing your job. For, because for you, you're gifted to act, and this is your job right. for you to take care of your family. So if you get, like you said, if you get recognized, good, no problem. But if you don't, still good, no problem, because you're still going to right. do this as long as you're successful. That is excellent. Wow. Yeah, as, long as, I, as long as I come home and my wife says, baby, and my children call me daddy, that's that's all I need. <laughs> you know, that's it. That is it, and that is wonderful. That is so wonderful. Well, we'll want, well, one thing we would like to do before we end this interview is to give you a chance to, you know, tell us where we can reach you, where we can support you. And as you said, you're, you're doing auditions right now, but if there's anything that you would like uh, future fans uh, to encourage you, why don't you give us a shout out on where we can like, a, if you have a Facebook page, a Twitter account, a website, or anywhere yeah, well, where we can support? Absolutely. I mean, you can always reach me at Facebook. It's just uh, my name, Will Dawson, uh, spelled D A L T on my last name. A lot of people think I say Dawson, like okay. Dawson's Creek, but it's oh, Dalton. Okay. okay. <laughs> and uh, same with, with Twitter. Uh, I think my handle is Will underscore Dalton one, the number one. Uh, on Twitter and on face uh, on Instagram is just Will underscore Dalton. I'm simple. <laughs> I'm just a simple guy. <laughs> oh, well, you know I mean? yeah, absolutely. Well, one thing we would like for you to do is if you could leave the nationers with one piece of advice that you could give them in li- not just so much in acting but in life in general that has kept you uh, afloat, that has kept you stable, that has kept your head in the game. What advice would you give them? Can I, can I give two? Um, I want to give a friend of mine. I wasn't I wasn't fortunate enough to meet Sidney Poitier. My friend you know, got to meet Sidney. Okay. And uh, he, he asked him a, a very uh, simple question. This is my friend telling me this. And he asked Sidney a question. And the question was, you know, when you were coming up, um, and this relates to life, too. It's not just about the business. And he says, you know, you, when you were coming to the game, you are like, it was discrimination and things of that nature. And, um, you know, you were this black man who had this this mystique, this elegance, this regalness about him, and you weathered current situation, and you weathered that industry to become one of our biggest icons in in cinema history, not just for black people, for everybody. And he said, you know, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around it. How did that happen? What what did you tell me? And Sydney told him, it's it's simple. You just stay in line. And my friend says, you know, it, you know, what do you what do you mean by staying in line? He didn't want to say that to Sydney, but he was thinking it like, okay, what does that mean? And Sydney broke it down for me. He said, listen, it's like this. He said, you're young. You you want to go to one of the the hippest spots in the city, right? Everybody's trying to get into that into that club, right? 
there's a line outside the door that's stretched around the block, down the street, right? So the, the line is stretched, you know, it, everybody, the who's who, everybody's trying to get into this place because this is the place to be. This is where you're going to make it happen. And you see this. And he said, one, some people are going to look at the line and be deterred right away. They don't want to wait in the line, right? Right. But you, you got your, you, you're brave and you say, hey, I'm going to go stand on line. Let me get in the line. Get the back of the line. More people are coming behind you. Now the, the line behind you is stretched around the block down the street around the corner. So there's a big line. You can't even see the, the, the building anymore. You just know you're in the line to get in there. After an hour goes by, people are complaining. They're saying, hey, you know, I, I'm going to just try somewhere else, and they get out of the line. And then after another hour or two, some other people are complaining behind you, and I'm going to go somewhere. And he says, by the time, you know, a few hours or years or however you want to put it in life terms go by, you're standing at the front of the line at the door with the guy opening the rope to let you in. And he says, you look up and everybody's gone. And he said, well, how did that happen? Did they get in the door? Did they? No, they got out of line because they weren't patient enough to wait for the guy. The guy was about to open the rope regardless. He was opening the rope. He was letting people in. But you, you know, in your own mind said, you know what, I'm done with it. I'm just through. I'm just going to, you know, forget it. I can go somewhere else and do the same thing. And, wow. But then, you know, you missed out on that opportunity to get what you were trying to achieve just because you stay in line. It's really about staying in line, being obedient, and just listening to your inner self and not the outside distractions around you, right? Oh. Like the people behind you. You don't listen to that because they don't know. You don't know, but, right. you know, you right. trust yourself more than you trust the individual with your own life, right? right. You, don't, uh, you don't want to put your life in the hands of somebody else. Right. So that, in turn, that was some of the best advice I ever heard. So I was like, man, that put it into perspective. It really And it was very deep. It really was. It's very deep. <laughs> And I, I kind of live by that now if he told me that story. And it's like, you know what, I just, you have to stay in line, stay the course. It might not happen immediately. But as long as you see traction and as long as you are going forward, you're making movement. It might not be as fast as you would like. You know, it might not be at a steady pace. But if you're moving, you're not stopped. Right. right? As long as you're not stopped, you have life with you. Right. Uh, yeah, and the other one was, the other piece of advice? Yeah, my my advice is, is always this. How I live is this, man. Um, and this goes for life and with everything else going on that's going crazy in the world. I say this a lot and I mean it. Okay. We are so privileged as, as people. Not Americans, not men, okay. not women, just, just as people. We're, we're human beings. We're, right. we're blessed because we, we're living in the universe and it's, the universe is so much bigger than us. We, right. we couldn't even wrap our minds around it. Absolutely. And so with that, you know, with, with all of the things that go on in the world, with all the things that could be a bad day, with all the things that could just make you, you know, frustrate you, I always say, listen, you, you can give those things a good five minutes of your time. And because that, you're not perfect, you just can't shake everything off right. for five minutes. That's right. That's and you say, listen, listen, it, it's, can I change it? No. If it's something you can change, then change it. But if you can't change it, Five minutes. Take five minutes, then about it, scream, yell, cry, whatever you got to do. But after that five minutes, you got to look at it and say, listen, I got to keep going because regardless if I'm mad or I stop, the world's still revolving. You know, we're still spinning. We're going around the sun. We're spinning 365 days. Out of the so when you look at it as being a connection to something greater than you, right, you have to look at it and say, I can't. Nothing's going to stop for me. Right. Nothing is going to stop for me. I have to get up and, and be, um, you know, I have to be a contributor to good in the world. I have to contribute to something. If that's your dream, you got to contribute to your dream. If, you, if it's helping people do that, you know, but, but always try to strive to do good and, and always try to, you know, strive to be the, be the best, the best version of yourself every day. Oh, that's awesome advice. Agree with both pieces of advice, because, you know, the first thing, and, you know, you were telling the story about uh, your friend talking to Sidney Poitier, and he's saying, stay uh -huh. in line. I know what we superficially think. What do you mean, stay in line? I'm, I'm fine. Right. I don't want <laughs> nobody to tell me. You said, but when he broke it down, like, you know what, wait your turn, I got right. it. Right. I got it. And right. you're so right about your, your second piece of advice. We understand what's going on in the world. 
We're not saying put your head in the sand and ignore it. We're saying the things that we can't control, we just can't control. But we can't control our opinions, our attitudes, how we handle things. We can control that. We go on out and make it a better place. I'm with you, Will, 100%. Wow, this has been an awesome, awesome interview. Thank you so much because I know you're a busy guy, and I am so looking forward to all of those other roles that you are going to be getting because, young man, you are definitely, you know, on the right track and have the right attitude. I can't see how you will not succeed. You will succeed greatly. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. It's and been a pleasure. It's, and it's been a pleasure for us. Thank you so much and have a great day. And you be sure to tell you tell your wife Candace I said hello and kiss those babies <laughs> for me. You kiss those babies. I for absolutely me. will. All right. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye bye. All right, bye bye. You do the same. Bye bye. The Swirl World Podcast would like to thank Will Dalton for taking time out of his busy schedule to talk with us here and we wish you much success on the awards we also want to take a moment to shout out to our good friend Samantha Custard congratulations on your wedding and thank you for taking time out of your schedule to help us arrange this wonderful conversation with Will And if you have not done so, please download us from iTunes and listen to us on Stitcher, TuneIn, and iHeartRadio. We can also be heard on Clamor, SoundCloud, Player FM, and Podbay FM. Don't forget to check us out on our Facebook pages, The Swirl World, Military Swirl, Hero Love, and 50 Days of Dating with Rachel Robinson. And be sure to become a part of our membership community, Date with Purpose. Remember, be intentional, know your worth, and most of all, keep swirling.